Hello everyone, I'm Yan Ran with Xinhua News Agency. Today I'm going to show you something amazing. I'm now standing at Maritime Silk Road Museum located in Yangjiang, South China's Guangdong Province, where the Nanhai No. 1 shipwreck is located. Nanhai No. 1 ship was a merchant ship believed to be in Song Dynasty. So what makes it so special and what makes it so famous is the way it gets out of the water. The excavation of the Nanhai Wan officially started on November 2013. Excavation with the saturated water method was used. As you may see here is the model of how the ship get out of the deep down sea. It was actually been put into a container as a whole. As we can see now, a group of archaeologists are still working hard on the site. Symbolized as the epitome of the development of China's underwater archaeology, Nanhai No. 1 sheds light on the prosperous maritime trade during that period and provides abundant evidence for research into the history of shipbuilding, ceramics, shipping and other aspects of ancient China and the whole of East and Southeast Asia. And today we are very lucky and to have this chance to have a very close look at what is going on right now. As you may see, some archaeologists are still working on the excavating work. There's huge workload. We just mentioned it was put into a container to get out of the water. And after that work, the Nanhai Wan was transferred to a huge caisson that's 40 meters long, 14 meters wide, and 8 meters high. And it happened in December 2007. And that caisson is what you see now. The excavating job is, takes very long time. As you may see, there are still some balls get into the hall and to wait for the archaeologist to save it from it. The discovery of Nanhai Wan is also interesting to mention. The remarkable discovery was triggered actually in 1987 by, a, by very coincident when a joint Chinese-British salvage team fished up porcelain items of the Song Dynasty while searching for a second ship actually belongs to the East India Company from the 18th century off the coast of Yangjiang. And coincidentally, they found Nanhai number no. 1. Considering the piles of works, you may ask, why not choose in situ preservation for the Nanhai Wan? The reason goes to the Nanhai Wan shipwreck was originally located in the fishing ground. Trawling posed the threat of direct and severe damage to the hull of the Nanhai Wan. While being covered in mud, the shipwreck continued to suffer from decomposition and erosion by seawater and marine life. 
That's why cetal preservation didn't work. For Nan Haiwan, the silt sediment at the shipwreck area causes a lot of suspension particles, which led to poor visibility. It is scientifically unfeasible to use direct underwater archaeological method. And you may see there are some archaeologists still doing the cleaning work. It's very time consuming and needs a lot of patience. Here, the porcelain and ceramics actually provides us a lot of clues of what happened back to the Song Dynasty. And it's also a great pleasure to find that actually there's a lot of goods waiting to be seen. Walking around the site, I have this mixed feeling. I see if I'm going back to the Song Dynasty. And for so many goods, you may imagine the business is already very prosperous, dating back to that time. Long time soaked deep down the sea brings a lot of erosion to the shipwreck. So, so the preservation become a big headache. You may find some water on the shipwreck. Actually, those are, are the anti-corrosion treatment. Walking around the hall, you may find actually the ship was divided into 15 cargo compartments by 14 partition boards. Every single compartment actually contains a large number of goods. And walking around the shipwreck gave us a very direct feeling of how hard, how difficult to get those treasures 
come to light once again. And also, you may see those, those silver tunnels. tunnels are actually bringing fresh air to the site. Since the anti-corrosion treatment, staying warm here is actually not that easy. And here we may see there's actually serious erosion happened to the ship hull. And many archaeologists are still working on it. So after a very close look at what is going on right now, let's get out of the let's get out of the site and see outside. It's our great pleasure to have Yan Na with us. Hello, Yan Na. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yan Na is actually the guide here, and she knows basically everything about Nando <laughs> Number One Shipwreck. So, you know, we just, we just visited the site and we see a, a lot of hard work is still ongoing. So, it's time for us to find out what we already have. Okay? And here we see a lot of layers, actually. So, would you give us a clue of what is this for? Yeah, this is a special way of packing on a ship because there is limited space in a ship. So people want to sell, sell as many goods as possible. They will put the little ones into a bigger one. For example, here we have a little jar, but there are four smaller bottles in it. Oh. Wow, it's actually very smart. They put like small ceramics nested into this bigger one actually. So do we see a lot of this way of packing in Nanhai number one? Yes, so that's why we found lots of ceramics on the ship. Right now we have retrieved about more than 180,000 pieces of ceramics. 180,000 pieces, yeah. wow. That's a large number for one single merchant ship, right? Yeah, because the economy of the Song Dynasty is very prosperous, especially the overseas trading. So you can see there are so many relics found on Nanhai Wen. Hmm. And those relics were made in different provinces, including products from Jingde Zheng Qiu of Jiangxi province, Longchuan Qiu hmm. of Zhejiang province, and the Hua Q, E Q, Qizhou Q of Fujian province. Some of them are of foreign style because they were specially made for foreign market. Oh, foreign style. Yeah, for example, here are some big bouts. And they can be used to eat ham pilaf.
So back to Song Dynasty, we already have customized products for them. Yes. Wow. And here we have a jar. Some jars, they are very big. Maybe they were used to store some food or water. Store food or water. Yeah. Hmm. But some of them are also for sale. And this one is very important because you can see there are some characters on it. Oh, there are some very different patterns there. Yeah. And that it says Bing Zi Nian Hao. It provides with some very important information because there is only three Bing Zi Nian in the Southern Song Dynasty. Mm. And this one may refer to 1216. Mm. So it, it leaves us the clue for exact year of this ship. Before or after 1216, but won't be a, too far away from this year. Mm. So we see here are all porcelains or ceramics. Yes, but we also found a lot of other kinds of rarities, including goldware, silverware, lacquerware, jade, etc. In ancient well, times, the sailors have to live together for a long time together, away mm. from land. Mm. So a ship is a small society. Mm. Nahaiwan is like a time capsule. It provides us with the information about the society 800 years ago. Wow, you really know a lot of this ship. And you, you basically every day you talk about the history and the products and everything about Nan Taiwan to our audiences yes. and to our visitors here. Yes. And I think that's a very interesting way to put it. Like Yena just said, Nanhai number one shipwreck was like a time capsule. It leaves us a lot of clues of what might happen back to the Song Dynasty. And the maritime Silk Road is not only a route of trade and business, it's also interactions between civilizations. Today I had great fun. I hope you feel the same. And I will see you next time.